are coming to my talk, Minting Confidence. I want to thank ChatGPT for coming up with this title, Navigating Imposter Syndrome in the NFT Realm as a Nobody. It even added the as a nobody part. It really must have known who I was. Um, so you've never heard of me, and for good reason. I'm not good at marketing. I don't have a large following online. I uh, have an NFT project with my partner Miguel called Rebel Ants that uh, minted out less than 1% of its supply. Back in 2017, I sold all my Bitcoin at $1,700 because how could it go any higher than that, right? Uh, and actually a few years before that, I wanted to show my beautiful wife how cool Bitcoin was. So when Overstock.com started accepting Bitcoin, I bought a $300 painting with Bitcoin which is now worth more than my house, and it's not even hanging up anymore. Um, and we have a live video podcast called Rebel Ants Radio that we've been doing weekly for over a year, and still we get less than 50 views uh, each time we go live. But every time we go live, I still feel like a fraud, a failure, a nobody, an imposter. And even though I still feel that way, I've learned that as we keep doing those things, my skills still grow a little bit each time. I've learned a little bit more about podcast producing and editing, live streaming, web design, web development, uh, public speaking and interview skills, and I've had a chance to network with some amazing people in the Web3 space. So my confidence grows a little bit each time we do one of those things, and we build those skills by continuing on. There's empowerment in that growth, that it's worth continuing on regardless of what those numbers are. So I've run four marathons in my life. Um, spoiler alert, I didn't win any of them. Has anyone here ever run a race? You did. Yeah. What, did, what, did, what did you run? What was your, what was your thing? Was it a, a run or a bike ride? I've done a triathlon, I've done two marathons, and three Spartan races. Very nice. Did you win any of them? Yeah. <laughs> did you really? Okay, there you go. There you go. Who else? Yeah. Who else ran something? I saw another hand go up. What did you run? Or what did you do? Marathon. A marathon. Did you win? No. Did you think you were going to win? No. No. So that's sort of the point is that we do these things, we do these tough things, even when we don't think we're going to win, we're not going to be the best, we're not going to be the fastest, but we still do those things because there's value in challenging ourselves to do new things. And maybe that's how we should be setting our goals is more against ourselves instead of comparing ourselves to other people. We know we're never gonna be the next Board Yacht Club. We're never gonna be Rug Radio, we're never gonna be the next you know, nifty morning show, hashtag choose rich. Um, <laughs> so we've had to find a way to be our own authentic selves and embrace that and move at our own pace instead of trying to compare ourselves. And that's why we now have a segment on our show called Toilet Thoughts, where we share our crazy ideas with each other without fear of being judged, without fear of losing advertisers or turning people away. That's just who we've come to be over time to have this uh, feel natural for us and feel good. And so it's important that we learn to celebrate those little wins. Because again, it's not about comparing ourselves or saying, did we finish first? It's about how are we improving? So as small as we are as a project, as a team, we still have over 17,000 followers on Instagram. We have over 20,000 followers on uh, TikTok, and we have over a thousand subs now in uh, in YouTube. Feel free to subscribe, mm -hmm. and uh, we've had over two hundred twenty-eight thousand views on our channel. So, those are good for us. We feel good about those. The numbers go up over time. It's nothing compared to some of those other uh, pr uh, radio projects, but we feel good about them, and that's the important part: is to learn to accept our own pace and set our own goals. I've also found it really helpful and motivating to have a partner, my boy Miguel, right there. Um, through having a partner, you can learn to celebrate and suffer together. So every time our YouTube subscriber count goes up by one, we're texting each other, oh man, we got another one. And when we go days or weeks without one, we're texting each other, where is everyone? Why isn't anyone watching? Uh, we also are really good at holding each other accountable. Sometimes it's keeping us on pace, on schedule for those things, and sometimes it's for him to tell me my web design sucks, and it's for me to tell him that his color palette sucks, but we're there to make each other better and we keep pushing each other. We also have a complementary skill set where I can't draw, I can't design an NFT, but he can't design a website. And so together we're able to put out a product that we feel good about. It's also helpful to share costs, cover for each other when our personal lives get in the way of these things. And it's also helpful to increase our surface area through networking. So Miguel is an artist, he has that network. 
me as a nobody, I have that network, and together we're just able to touch more people uh, and cover more ground with getting our message out and trying to gain support. And so as motivating uh, as it is to have a partner, um, we, we like to look back at the first version of something we did, the first version of the podcast that we did. It didn't look that great. It looks a lot better today because we've learned to grow those skills. The first NFT we put out, Rebel Ants, it didn't look that great. The new one that we just put out today, which you can go mint at rebelance.io, it looks really good. We're really proud of that. And um, the first website we put out wasn't that great. The one we put out now, we're really proud of that. And so that growth over time is from continuing to do it, continuing to iterate and challenge ourselves. And so I would encourage you, if you feel like a nobody, to find those skills that you're interested in or find the things you're interested in and work on those skills because there's so many free resources out there. Nobody's stopping you. There's no barriers to entry here. There's free resources if you want to design something, right? We watched Pablo Stanley design Roboto's in Figma for free, a very well-known uh, project, RIP, no longer exists, but um, it was all done in Figma for free. If you want to stream online, you can use uh, StreamYard, you can use YouTube, all for free. You can just get started and put yourself out there and start to improve those skills. If you want to put out a website, you can use Webflow, Doric, Card. If you want to create content, you can do it on Medium, you can do it on X, all for free. And if you want to learn, if you need to learn new things about how to improve those skills, head over to YouTube, Udemy, or Free Code Camp. And again, there's, there's growth and empowerment in learning those skills because you feel more confident and over time you get to kind of build out that vision that's in your head that makes it uniquely you, which hopefully over time will attract more people because it's unique, it's you, it's not trying to be somebody else. So I want to share with you a framework that I learned from uh, one of my favorite online creators, Mr. Ben Burns. He calls it the evidence inventory. So this is a good framework if you're feeling like an imposter and you need to move past that. So all you need is a piece of paper, a pen, or a pencil. And at the top, you're gonna to write, I'm not ready to blank. Whatever the thing is you think you're not ready to do. So for me, that might say, I'm not ready to start an NFT podcast, right? And then you're gonna make two columns. On the left, you're gonna say, why is this true? And on the right, you're gonna say, why is this false? And under that, you're gonna put the list of the reasons that you think it is true or isn't true. Call it your imposter list on the left. Call it the trophy list on the right, because those are the things that you think Maybe this isn't true because I can do this. So for me, that might look like, you know, I, um, I can't do this, I can't start an NFT uh, podcast because one, I don't have an audience. Two, I don't uh, have any alpha to share. Nobody wants to listen to what I say. I don't have any notable collections uh, that you know, make me special or stand out in a timeline. And the reason maybe it's false that I am ready to start a podcast is because I used to do a podcast once upon a time. Um, I'm passionate about this industry. I've been present since you know, 2010, learning about Bitcoin and being involved in cryptocurrency. And I also like teaching, and I, I learn from others through their process. So maybe someone watching me will help them move forward through their journey. So once you have your list, take a look, see which list is longer. Is it the imposter list or the trophy list? And then see which one carries more weight, which one matters more, which one's gonna stop you from moving forward or encourage you to keep going. If you feel like your imposter list is longer or carries more, the next thing you want to do is validate your imposter list. Go through each of those items and say, is this a fact or opinion? Right? Am I just telling myself this is a fact? Am I telling myself it's an opinion? Um, is it true for everyone? Is it true for just me? Or is it true for everyone? If it's not true for everyone, why am I thinking it's just true for me? Right? And then who told me this? Where did I hear this? Is it something I made up? Is it from somebody who's a reputable source that I believe in? Would someone who loves me agree that this is a reason I couldn't do the thing that I want to do? And is it, again, based on a comparison? And if it is based on a comparison, is it a fair comparison, right? Again, it doesn't make sense for me to compare Rebel Ants Radio to the Nifty Morning Show at, at this point. So hopefully after all that, you feel less like an imposter. So in conclusion, define your own goals. Uh, on your own terms, find a partner to celebrate the suffer with, celebrate the wins, shoot your shot, continue learning, and keep going because you never know if your art will be on display in an artist gallery like Miguel, or it'll be standing on a stage giving a talk at NFT NYC. Yeah, great job, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.